Hi, Ben. Let's take a look at this new set you sent us. Um, so we have the letter to your friend. Let's see what you wrote. Dear Jane, how have you been? Hope this letter finds you well. Anyway, I thought I'd just drop you a quick line to say sorry since I couldn't meet you a couple of days ago. Besides, I'm also wondering if you'll be available next weekend. Okay, I like most of this. Um, I think it's good. Let's see. Uh, the first couple of sentences are okay. I think what I don't like is a couple of the linkers you have. So I'm not really crazy about that anyway, and also not that besides. Um, so they just didn't really feel natural. So why don't we try something a little different? Also, don't forget you need a comma after the name, okay? So how have you been? Now, here's another thing about this. Um... It, it's kind of strange that you used the word recently since you say couldn't meet you a couple of days ago. So, I mean, that would make sense if you haven't spoken to this person in, I don't know, maybe like a month. You know what I mean? But since you haven't really spoken in the last couple of days, the recently feels kind of weird. So let's change that. So let's make it, Dear Jane, how have you been? Hope this letter finds you well. I thought I'd just drop you a quick line to say sorry since I couldn't meet you a couple of days ago. Also, I'm wondering if you'll be available next weekend. And then you can get rid of this one, you can put it here, and then you're fine. I just feel this all feels a little more natural in terms of language. Um, those are my suggestions to you, okay? So, now, here, I really think you should have had some explanation you should have yeah you should have written like a topic sentence explaining what the paragraph is about clearly you're explaining this bullet give your reasons i understand that you still should have given some sort of introduction because you just go right into it and it's it's kind of strange so here it could have been um Let's see, it's a friendly letter. So you could have said something like, um, let me explain what happened um, and why we couldn't meet. Or um, you wouldn't believe what happened to me um, when I was in your town. Or just something like this to kind of um, direct the reader to what the paragraph is about okay even though it's an informal letter um you still need to do this kind of thing in order to make it coherent so and you never told us let me explain to you what would happen even that would have been okay um so why don't we try that too how have you been hope this letter finds you well i thought i'd drop you a quick line to say sorry since i couldn't meet you a couple of days ago also i'm wondering if you'll be available on the next weekend before we get into that, let me explain to you what happened and why I couldn't see you. So something like that, even in that paragraph here, would have made sense. And then you segue into this paragraph, okay? Does that make sense? I hope it does. If it doesn't, say, Ellen, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let's see. I arrived in London on Monday last week and planned to see you mm, the following afternoon that's how you do this okay the following afternoon it's um, indirect speech so you're talking about the past from the past if that makes sense um plans in the past anyway it's not really indirect speech but you're still talking about the past from the past so that's the kind of word you want to use however i received some urgent texts from my supervisor that night and was asked to finish them asap therefore for the next couple of days i was just staying in the hotel and dealing with my work once again I gonna say sorry about that. Okay, so this is fine up to here. The therefore, again, feels a little formal. When you're talking to your friends, you're probably not gonna say therefore. Instead, you're going to say so. Okay, so, so for the next couple of days, I was just staying in the hotel. You didn't even need the and. You could have just said dealing with my work. Once again, Sorry about that. The I gonna say is just really wrong. I mean, not just because it's informal. I mean, okay, yeah, we talk like that. We do say gonna, but it's still wrong. Do you know what I mean? So the gonna and say is is not used correctly here. Um, but even if it were used correctly, it's still a little too informal, okay? So 
once again, I'm really sorry about that. That's all. I am really sorry. But guess what? I just, mm, this is a little weird. Not I just got to know. I just found out that I'm going to London once again to attend a meeting next week. After the meeting, I'll be off work for three days. So I guess you put a, put a comma here. I guess maybe we can meet each other and have a meal on Saturday or Sunday evening, whichever is more convenient. Just let me know if you are okay with that. And you can phone me personally on my new number, blah. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Best regards. Lowercase r on the second word, okay? When in your closing, the second word is lowercase. All right, so that's fine. Apologize and suggest. Okay, yeah, this is good. Um, I guess maybe we can meet. That's fine. That's a suggestion. Sure, it's tentative, so that's fine. The language is good. You developed. I liked it. That was fine. All right, so it's just some of those little things. I mean, this was good, but, you know, there were some flaws that might keep it from getting uh, to the score that you need. So just work on those and, um, yeah, let's just improve it, improve the accuracy, okay? Let's take a look at your task two about uh, fast food. In recent years, it has been witnessed that fast food is supplanting traditional foods in many nations throughout the world. Some argue that this trend not mm, would, but is having an adverse effect on families, individuals, and society. Personally, I strongly agree with this idea. This essay will discuss this issue using examples from the Chinese government and Stanford University to demonstrate points from my arguments. Lovely. That's good. Let's see. Firstly, there is ample evidence that ones, I don't understand that, can possibly, okay, no, not ones. I think you just mean people. There is ample evidence that people can possibly be estranged from their family members if they frequent fast food restaurants. Fine. The central reason behind this is that they no longer spend time having lunch or dinner at home with their parents, wife, or children, therefore shortening the quality time when family members can have conversations and enhance family bonds. Good. For example, recent empirical studies, this should be lower cased by the Chinese government, show that over 85% of young adults who frequently have dinners with their relatives can build closer, bond, closer rapport. Mm. We don't actually don't use the word rapport in the plural. Instead, we say can build a, cl a closer rapport better with their family members. Or you know what? You don't even just say members. You can just say family. While over 60% of those who tend to eat fast food alone regularly fail to do so. Great grammar here. Good. Therefore, it is con conclusively clear that family lives will be affected negatively by fast food. All right. This is a great paragraph about uh, the negatives. Clearly about family. Good, 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 good. Let's see what you did in the next one. Secondly, eating an excessive amount of fast food, not would, but could. Remember, you don't, you never want to be too absolute in an IELTS essay. So you want to do something we call hedge. You want to say that this could happen, this may happen, this might happen. But you never want to say that something will happen, something would. Well, you can use would, but it depends on the rest of the sentence. But here, the wood feels a little off to me. So let's say instead could. Secondly, eating an excessive amount of fast food could lead to numerous potential health risks. Okay, you already used could, so then you don't need to use potential. So could lead to um, numerous health risks to individuals and in turn would be harmful to communities. Good. Western fast food, such as fried chicken, hamburgers, french fries, and Coke, Okay, yeah, is well known for being rich in fat, sugar, and other artificial ingredients, which are the main contributors to a great number of fast food junkies contracting very diseases. Okay, for instance, an extensive study by Stanford University revealed that the possibility of fast food lovers suffering from diabetes, high blood pressure, digestive problems, and other chronic diseases is roughly 70% higher than those who do not eat fast food regularly. Furthermore, if a growing proportion of the population... Mm, were becoming ill due to their unhealthy diets, the medical cost would dramatically, okay, fine, which imposes a heavy, heavy financial burden on communities. Thus, it is possible to state beyond doubt that both personal well-being and society will be influenced by the prevalence of fast food. Great, great, great. I really like this. And I'm so happy with the way you organize this. We'll talk about this. In conclusion, again, lowercase. In the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that a fast food campaign I don't know why we're talking about campaign here. We're just talking about fast food. And remember, it's fast food um, becoming more prevalent than traditional food. So don't forget to include somewhere this idea about 
you know, we're, as you said, supplanting traditional food. So is detrimental to an individual's health, domestic relationships, s and society in the future? It can be predicted that the harmfulness of having too much fast food will increase on your own importance. Okay, great. So, uh, like I said, I was really, really happy about a couple of different things. Number one, I was ha very happy that you focused on these and the way you divided it, I thought was a very good idea. Okay, very good. Um, I like that you focused on fast food. That's absolutely correct. Many times people focus on traditional food entirely or the benefits of traditional food and the benefits of fast food, but that's wrong. So the way, the way you organize this and your task achievement, I thought was very good. Very good. If there were one thing I wanted, it would have been, um, a, some sort of reference to traditional food in this paragraph. So let me show you what I mean here. You did it. So, um, you said they are no longer spending time with their parents, etc. So that's like a relevance to this whole idea of traditional, uh, eating. And then here you said, uh, dinners, build a closer rapport. You could have said with homemade meals, that would have made it even stronger. Um, so again, it links back to this idea of traditional food here. Um, yeah, you said then those who do not eat fast food regularly, what you could have done is you could have said, uh, is roughly 70% higher than those who, um, eat traditional foods prepared at home that would have linked it back to this idea of traditional food. Do you understand what I mean? Um, so I thought this was great, but there is this inherent kind of a comparison being made here in this topic. And so if you can somehow talk about fast food, but occasionally link it to the weaknesses of fast food compared to traditional food, then you have a really, 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 really strong essay here. Okay. You did it in some of it. You didn't do it in all of it. And that's my one kind of comment about what you could have improved in task achievement. Otherwise, I was super happy with it because you focused on the right thing, which was fast food. You absolutely developed this. So it was super focused. I was really happy about that. Okay. So good job with this. Um, I thought your task one was weaker than the task two. It needed a little more help, um, but you're definitely on the right track. Okay. So let's see more work from you. Good luck.